May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please have a seat. When I was a theological student, we had a lecturer in preaching and homiletics who I remember in one of our early lectures in preaching asked us a question. He said, do you know how at the end of every reading in church we hear the words, hear the word of the Lord, and we respond, thanks be to God. We all nodded our heads very dutifully. And at the end of the gospel passages, we say the gospel of the Lord, and we all respond, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. He said, are there ever times where you'd rather not say that? Are there any times where you'd rather say, Lord, we wish you hadn't given us that word, or we really don't want to praise you, Jesus Christ, because those words are just too hard to hear? Well, you can imagine that as a group of freshly minted theological students, we sat silent and said nothing for fear of being judged in Uh, of saying something that was incorrect and then, well, living with the consequences. But his truth, his question, led us to reflect more deeply on what we encounter in the scriptures and how we respond. The gospel passage that we have heard proclaimed today from Luke's gospel is following on directly from last Sunday's readings. It is a continuation of the Sermon on the Plain. Not unlike Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, just different altitude and a little bit shorter with a different audience who was intended to hear it in its first hearing. Perhaps as well, at times a little less punchy, but not so today. Today, This gospel passage, for me anyway, contains words that challenge me and that I struggle with. And it contains ideas that really are difficult for us to take in at some stage in our lives and really live out. Now, oftentimes when we think of difficult words of Jesus or difficult sayings of Jesus, we think about the classics like divorce. And if you're like me and you're a parish priest with an associate, you normally get your associate to preach that weekend because it's hard to go there. A little bit like preaching on uh, Trinity Sunday. Give that one to the curate. Excellent. Well done. Today, we hear things that at a surface level are not that bad. It's only when we mine down into what Jesus is actually saying that it becomes a little bit more cutting and it becomes more difficult for us to hear, to act on and to live out in our everyday life. This short passage of Luke's Gospel contains perhaps one of the more famous parts of the scriptures, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would expect them or hope that they would do unto you. Now we know that quite well. It's at some level the bedrock of our civilized society that we live by. But there's so much more in this passage that calls us as Christians, calls us as a society to live in a particular way. When we find ourselves in a position where somebody offends against us, when somebody does something that causes harm to us, it seems to be part of our human nature that it is incredibly difficult not to act in a way that would seem like retaliation. Or we simply protect and defend ourselves. 
Even when somebody holds a different point of view to us about something, something whether that's something in our day-to-day -day life or something in the scriptures, we seem to have within our nature this propensity to either fight or to crumble. There seems to be really, at times, very little middle ground, nothing much in the middle, and we tend to live, at least in our human nature, we want to live on one or other extreme. <clears throat> Jesus' words today call us to a different way of being. They call us to transformation. They call us to experience the world in a different way. When somebody does something to us which seemingly offends us, Jesus' words, as difficult as they are to hear today, to absorb and to live out, call us to respond in a way that would seemingly be against our human nature. If someone strikes you, turn the other cheek. Another famous one that we know so well, but it's so difficult to actually live it out. Love those who don't want the best for you. Love those who abuse you. It's a really poor paraphrase of what we're hearing here. It's just not part of our natural type of response in these situations. So how do we deal with it? What do we do? How do we live with integrity as Christian people and not just dismiss challenging and difficult sayings of Jesus like we've heard today? Well, we pray. We immerse ourselves in God's love for us because it's in immersing ourselves in God's love for us that we discover the truth that is contained within these words. We discover that it's actually not left simply up to us to seek to live this perfect life that Jesus lived where he set a very high bar. It is only by the grace of God that we are able to live in this way. So calling on God's Holy Spirit to strengthen us, to transform us, to allow our hearts and minds to be changed is in some ways really the only option that we have. And as we plumb the depths of God's great love for us, his compassion and mercy and forgiveness, we come to another truth, that it is really only because God loved us first that we are able to love. It's really only because God was compassionate and merciful to us first that we are able to live as people of compassion and mercy. It is only because God first forgave us our offences that we are able to forgive others. When we begin to think of things in those terms, it becomes, well, the path becomes clearer. It doesn't necessarily become any easier, but we can actually see a way forward. So that when we come to those extremely difficult moments in our lives, and I'm not trying to dis downplay them, they are significant at times and traumatic. But when we come to those moments, we are able to immerse ourselves in the reality of God's love for us. And we are able to see in the person of Jesus Christ a way forward. And we are able to experience through the power of the Holy Spirit transformation as God takes that which deeply, deeply affects us and causes us pain and transforms it into something else. Perhaps love, 
perhaps forgiveness, perhaps compassion. And as we experience that transformation in our own lives, the world quietly sees in us the power of God made real. And this is our call as Christian people. By virtue of our baptism, we are called and we commit ourselves to be disciples of Christ, to seek to live our lives according to that pattern, the pattern of one who forgave even those who abused him, who beat him, who eventually murdered him. We see it right till the last moment, hanging on the cross, as that repentant thief seeks mercy and forgiveness and it is granted. We will at times experience great trauma, great pain. Our hope and our consolation is that God's love for us is never ending. God's desire for us is to be people who flourish and live good lives. Our prayer today may be that when we experience those moments in our life, that rather than fighting or crumbling, we will find a way of transformation, a way of grace to respond as God has already responded to us. So let's go home today and look again at these re this reading. Look again at these difficult moments, these difficult words, and think about the times in our life where we most need to be transformed. The experiences in our life where we most need to be transformed and live in the grace of God. May we know Christ's forgiving love, God's abundant blessing, and his grace as we do these things. The Lord be with you.